Hello. Smart is here. I'm gonna, um... Actually, I am going to get more into, uh... Sort of a, a few videos. I think this is gonna take a couple of videos. Um, where I'm gonna talk about, uh, composition. Um, as far as making comics. Uh, it's one of the most overlooked factors. I, I think it's one of the most overlooked things, you know, in, in, in the, uh, the whole the whole making as far as making comics is concerned um and you know i, I i'm not going to talk about things like lighting and color but i'm going to talk about like uh lettering and um you know dialogue sound effects and their placement and how that can have an effect on on um the flow of the story the rhythm of the story um it can just have on 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 the comp, you know, just composition and how it can have a, an, a, an effect on the enjoyment for the reader, and uh, and how it can also affect the artwork um, for the artist, um, and how just it just lettering seems to be one of those things that's overlooked a lot when people talk about making comics. They talk about the craft as far as art, but they don't talk about the letters because lettering the letters that's part of what makes comics comics in the first place comics is sort of defined by this union of art and letters coming together to make a, a visual story and um, a lot of people just they look over they look over the uh, the whole lettering thing so I'm going to actually um, for probably this first video I'm going to show a couple of examples of my own work some old stuff um, where I have some, maybe some good examples and some bad examples of, um, of sort of rhythm. Rhythm is going to be the first thing that I'll talk about. And then I'll talk about other factors of composition, uh, possibly in other videos. So, um, let's, let's talk about, you know, rhythm, uh, with this. And I, I've, this one I feel like is, a, it's, there's a, a good flow as far as the rhythm, um, and one of the things that you have to keep in mind is for for um, most of us, not all of us, but it, it depends. It really depends, though. Um, and, and I think a lot of countries read from left to right, um, whereas there are countries that read from, you know, right to left. And um, this determines the flow of the comic, the rhythm, really, uh, not really the pacing. I'm not really talking about how long it takes you to read a dialogue bubble, um, to read the dialogue in a dialogue, in a word balloon, but how, you know, the rhythm is the matter of when you're finished with that dialogue balloon, uh, where do you go next? And that is dictated by not only the pictures, but the words. And so it's, it's good to make sure that you have a, a, a clear path you know, that, that you have created a clear path for the reader to follow. Um, so, in uh, this first example, this first panel um, here, I, uh, oh, you know what, I'll choose red. Oh, hold on, I actually have to change this. I didn't, I forgot that it's, I don't find it. Um, so, this first panel here actually has a pattern of, it's a rhythm pattern that's almost like a Z. It goes from here to here to here and then out. And that's usually like what, you know, most basic comics have. They have this sort of Z pattern, this one, two, three sort of sort of pattern, you know, this flow to them. Um, not all of them. Some of them will take on uh, other other letters, other shapes, and other, other flow, you know, other... Um, ways that they're they're gonna flow, um, and so with this one, it's a uh, this one. It, it you read the dialogue, and it leads you down to the character, and and it's a thought bubble. It's not sort of a regular dialogue bubble. It's a thought bubble, a thought balloon, um, and then it think you it leads you down to the the character, and I mean since he's thinking, you know, you don't it doesn't really have too great an impact on what's going on in it but 
the the way that it flows it leads you down to him and you see he's thinking and you, you see what he's focused on here so it just kind of leads you there and then it leads you out you're just naturally led out once you've hit the bottom of the panel you just kind of lead out and usually a reader will be led out and up because it's just you're, you're flowing you're gonna always flow down and up down and up across like that um and so you see it even here it comes up off of the last page up he says I wonder you see his face and it leads you down and when there's no place to go up anymore you know to go down to the next the next row and so the next row I think is a really good example of rhythm because or flow um, because it starts here in the uh, left left hand corner where there's a sound effect now we don't know if that door is directly behind him or in front it's actually in front of him but for the sake of the comic and reading from you know from left to right you know to create a good flow the sound effect is located here in the left hand corner so that you go left hand corner the sound effect down to the character and then you see the character, his action, come out. You know, you come out in an in a L shape, and you see this sound effect here that sort of uh, backs up the action that's happening here. And that's the clicking of him putting on his shades. And so it leads you out and up here to where you see his hand putting this, this, uh, this, this artifact, this item, into a drawer and you've got the sound effect here that leads you down to the next page where he's closing the, the drawer, that's the sound effect, and you see the action. And that leads you up and over to the next page, to the next panel, where he says, come in, and he, he positions himself. His posturing is sort of waiting. And um, unfortunately, it does... You know, this is like I said, this is all early stuff, so it does break down. I was still learning it at the time, so it completely breaks down in this final panel. Um, because I, I made the mistake of putting both dialogue balloons, both word balloons, over here on the right side. Even though the sound effect happens where the doors open with, you know, sort of that Star Trek swooshing noise or whatever. Both of the uh, word balloons are on here, on this, on this, uh, on the, um, the right hand side. Whereas uh, this one, honestly, because this is this character talking, it should have probably been somewhere around here. Um, and then his response should have probably been somewhere around here. Now this is me looking back at older work and being able to figure out where things would go. Of course, it wouldn't have cut into this balloon, up, this, this panel up here like that. That's just, that's that's terrible to do in this particular case because then it would have led the person's the person reading their eye down to this instead of across so that's something to keep in mind um, and I'll talk about um, overlapping and uh, placement of balloons in um, other in you know some of the other videos that I'm going to do along with this with with the whole uh, composition series but um so yeah this was kind of bad uh, it, was a, it was actually really good in the first half and then in the very end I really messed up and part of it was something else that I'm going to talk about in a later in a later video which is um, pretty images and not wanting to mess them up like this was a really nice image a really nice drawing I put a lot of work into it um, and I didn't want to mess it up by sticking a word balloon here in this space and a word balloon here in this space which would have made sense and instead I stuck them over in this sort of uh, negative zone where there was all this black fill um, and really that it sets it kind of ruins the entire balance of the picture um, because I put the word balloons right there um, whereas if the entire image had been shifted over even slightly to where there was less black and more of the character then I probably could have balanced these word balloons directly in the middle and it would have led the eye directly across. You would have come into the picture, read the words, and gone out of the picture. But, like I said, it's um, sort of a learning 
thing. You know, it, it's it's one of those things that you learn the longer you do comics. Um, let's see. I do have a, a really bad example. I have a bad example of um, <clears throat> rhythm. Um, and I'll explain it. It's not in these first panels. These first panels are fairly, you know, uh, they're fairly straightforward. Um, one, two, three. You know, you see, it's, it's mostly action. There's only one bit of dialogue. But the real problem happens in the second set of panels. Um, panels, what is that? Four, five, and six. Where the, the dialogue is between these two characters. And so it's supposed to be a back and forth, as you can see, because in this panel, this panel, and this panel, there's there's very little change between these two panels, and then and and only one extra character added in the third panel. But it, as far as dialogue, there are a couple of things going on with this. One, too much dialogue and too little space. There's just not enough space for these these dialogue bubbles to really fit in. These t these these panels are tiny. They're absolutely tiny. So that's one thing that you have to think about when creating um, comics. And one of the best ways to, to work around this is by sort of pre-lettering. And I'll talk about that in a different series, in a different uh, video as well. But pre-lettering um, will, will sort of help uh, determine where the best fit for uh, word balloons and how many words you should try to fit in there. It can even restructure uh, dialogue altogether. But um, I'll, I'll talk about that later. But right now, I mean, these were uh, the one one problem was there was too much dialogue and too little space. And the other problem is the flow, the ryth the rhythmic flow of this of these scenes. Um, it's supposed to be the back and forth, and what you get is it was supposed to actually take on this shape, sort of a W. It's supposed to go up, down, up, down, up like this. Um, but that's not always the case with every reader. Um, I have encountered readers who read it straight across like this. Now you would think, oh, you know, no one would, you, you would think no one's going to read like that. But I've introduced people to comics through my comic, this old comic series that I used to do. And, you know, someone that reads a regular book, you know, you read it from left to right, they're going to read straight across and not even think about, think about it because these panels line up in this way so that your, your your eye is sort of led across like that but my intention was for you to read up and down up and down um, now the it's really a problem the problem is all those things all those different factors coming in into play the the size of these panels and the size of the dialogue bubbles but also oops, <laughs> But also, it has to do with, there are a few things that could have prevented people going straight across. And that is uh, preventing things like this. Overlay, panel overlay. This dialogue balloon overlays this panel. And that's just, that's wrong. That's a bad thing to do. Uh, unless you, unless, say, this word balloon was down here, this is not a good thing because it's not going to lead the eye back up. It's really not going to lead the eye up. If, if anything, it would lead the eye down and then immediately across to the next, the next visible uh, word balloon. Um, you really can't assume that everyone knows how to read a comic, and so you you. It's it's you're, it's up to you when lettering the book to make it as easy as possible for them to get from one place to the next. Um, the best solution for this would have honestly to have completely redone these these panels to where both sets of balloons could have been somewhere near the top, where you could go one two, one two, one two. Like that. actually, this last this last panel is okay because only one person is really saying anything. But still, um, that was really the problem that, I, that that's going on with that one. Uh, I don't think there there aren't. Well, yeah, there's even a problem with this this last this last panel. And 
and that's um, again overlap. There's a bit of overlap here, and this overlap takes the eye naturally from here, from the first balloon to the second balloon, and then right into the last panel. But right here, oops, right here, there's a there's a second there's a second sort of sub uh, sub balloon because. You're actually supposed to be led here to here to here. This is his reaction. His, well, I guess his extra reaction to what she says. Um, and then you're supposed to go over to the last panel. But because of the way that these are laid out, it doesn't really allow that, that movement. You know, you don't, your eye isn't going to do this. You're gonna look at these, and then you're gonna you're gonna get distracted by these and read right over, and then you go, oh, there was something else down here. So it's very it's it's definitely important to uh, work on compositions. You make sure that you lay out the flow of the word balloons um, correctly, so that the eye has a natural arc across the page. That's not a natural arc. A uh, natural arc would have just would have honestly have just been this, and then down through the through the uh, artwork. Um, oops, keep doing that. Um, so yeah, uh, the final final example that I have is this one that I made up, which is also a part of my my uh, the video that I'm going to do on um, pre lettering. So what I have here is a very simple picture that I made where you have two characters. Immediately when you look at the when you look at this panel, you're gonna see character one. Oh, hold on. Character one uh, and character two. You're gonna see them and you're gonna see that they their their line of sight, where they're looking, the directions that they're looking are two different directions. He's looking to the left, he's looking to the right. So clearly there's something else going on there. And you're going to read across not only the characters, but also the dialogue. You're reading across everything that's going on in the page like this. You read his first set of dialogue, his second set of dialogue, then the sound effect that's happening, something is happening off panel. And then this character's reaction to that off panel thing which will lead you to the next panel. This will lead you over to that panel where we see this thing that's making the sound. Um, and that's really that's really one of the things. I mean, there are other there are several ways that you can probably uh, line this up, but this was probably the the easiest way to line up uh, a panel where you want the flow. And and this is it's one of those things you know uh, sound effects and, and this. Sound effects, um, I'll get into more in a separate video so I can keep these videos nice and short. Sound effects are something that it's, it's constantly overlooked when people letter, you know, basic lettering people are all on board for. Um, but they treat the sound effect as if it's not a part of this and this. And it very much is a part of not only the dialogue, but also the characters. It's an extension of both because it's the bridge. This is the bridge between what the characters are saying and your omniscient, and the reader's sort of omniscient uh, uh, stance, as, you know, as, as far as their um, position uh, in contrast to these characters, and sort of where the characters, the world that the characters are actually living in. This is that bridge between you and the characters and the, and the shared experience. Um, and, and misplacement of sound effects really, really, really can mess up that natural flow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this video, but I will continue talking about uh, these topics and a few others as far as composition in comics uh, in some other videos. And I'll show some other examples from some other comics that I've read and even some of my own. Um, so... Thank you. I hope this was helpful and uh, a bit enjoyable. <laughs> uh, sorry if it was really, you know, stiff, but hey. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you, and uh, 
Hi.